Wow, there is a lot to get to in the program tonight. We begin in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and the shooting of Jacob Blake. This is a story that started on Sunday around 5 o'clock or so. Some citizen recording what happened from his perspective. The video goes viral. We know what happened after that. And now the question is, what exactly happened? And what happened behind that car? What we didn't see that night from the first video? Well, tonight, we've got a new angle for you to take a look at. And it tells a little bit more of the story as someone with a cell phone, again, recording what is happening and is out of sight of that first video that everyone saw. So it's a reverse angle. And this is important because we know the reaction to what happened. We've got an investigation going on, but we still don't know a lot. But we do know a little bit more tonight, and we are going to talk about it. Let's begin, though. Warning. All these videos related to this story, graphic in nature, not for everyone to see. So if you've got people that should not be seeing this, let them out of the room for a while. They probably shouldn't be watching this show anyway. You should be, though, because it's an important story, an important case. So I'm going to show you this reverse angle, okay? It's only about 22 seconds of video. But pay close attention to the beginning of the video because this is the part we haven't seen before. This is some of what is happening before the officers raise their weapons as, as uh, Jacob Blake walks around the car. So we're going to see that reverse angle now. Let's take a look. All right, there's several parts of this to me that are striking. One is that there is some sort of tussle going on. I don't know another word to describe it between police and Jacob Blake, but also all these people are there. There is a huge crowd of people that you don't see from the other video. All these people are witnesses. These are people that can explain to investigators what they know about what happened and what, what happened before the video started rolling. A lot of information from that short clip. Let's bring in our team of legal journalists with me right now. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, Court TV anchors Julie Grant and Michael Ayala. Um, Chanley, let me start with you. What context do we have about who shot this video, where it came from? And will we see any other videos like a body cam or will we have any other recordings of what happened here? Well, we know that this video was cell phone video shot by a Kenosha native. Her, her name is Michelle Smith. She posted this video on her Facebook page, and now it has gone viral, of course, as another angle that we're looking at. If you look at that picture, you see a squad car right behind this gray SUV that is presumed to be Jacob Blake's car. The squad cars have cameras. But the officers themselves don't have body cams at the Kenosha PD. They've announced that that's in the budget for 2022, but they do have recording, audio recording devices that they wear in the field. Now, when we reached out to the public information officer there with the Kenosha PD, he did confirm that, but he said any request for any audio recording from the incident would be denied due to an ongoing investigation. But at the same time, he didn't confirm that whether or not those officers were wearing any audio recording devices when this did take place on Sunday. All right, Julie, taking a look at this reverse angle tonight, does this change anything? You know, I, I think it does, Vinny, and I think things are going to keep on changing as we learn more and more facts. And I feel like I can't emphasize enough how important it is to wait until we have all of the facts before rushing to judgment. There are a lot of very ill informed opinions out there. And it's very, very sad. And we're seeing more and more violence. It's 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 frightening. It's upsetting. It shouldn't be happening. Uh, but yes, we see, number one, how chaotic this scene is. We see what looks like perhaps even some interference with that arrest. I mean, we learned from the DOJ coming out and saying something new that was revealed in a, in a press release is that they were attempting to place Jacob Blake under arrest, that there was a female caller 
who called and said that her boyfriend was present and was not supposed to be on the premises. So we know officers are arriving there thinking, at the very least, it's a trespassing case, right? That's what that's all they know upon dispatch. Then they get there, attempt to place them under arrest, and there's tussling involved. You see it. You see the tussling. He doesn't willingly submit to arrest. Um, there's resisting. And so then it, it goes to the next level, which is tasing. We know that they deployed tasers. That was unsuccessful. Um, and then when he attempts to walk away from the officers defiantly going around the car and not submitting to the arrest, you see the guns drawn. So it's it's really interesting to get that other vantage point. And again, we cannot look at this just in a vacuum as what happened as he reached in, because right now we know that he was armed, but we don't know when exactly he had that knife. I wish they would come out and say when, because that's a really key fact um, here for these officers as to whether or not this shooting was justified, Vinny. Michael, looking at this reverse angle now of this, what what jumps out to you as being significant? What are we seeing now that maybe we didn't see before? What do we know now that we didn't know before? Yeah, Vinny, you know, um, I had questions about why the officers' guns were out. This answers that question. I'm not sure it justifies it, but it answers the question. There was this physical tussle, so I understand that they could not subdue him for whatever reason they were trying to subdue him. But I'll tell you what, Vinny, it still doesn't change my end result opinion, which is this is a domestic violence call, which at the most is a trespass, which at least, I mean, is a trespass. At most, he has a knife and he tells them he has a knife, but we don't know if it's out or not. Why a call regarding a trespass or a domestic violence ends in death? I, it still doesn't answer that question for me. I still don't understand why this man is dead. I mean, I'm sorry, why this man well, the got Attorney shot General. seven times and, and is paralyzed from the waist down. I still don't understand why. This doesn't answer that question for me. Well, the Attorney General of Wisconsin spoke today, gave us some more information about the case. Let's take a listen. During the incident, officers attempted to arrest Jacob S. Blake, age 29. Uh, law enforcement deployed a taser to attempt to stop Mr. Blake. Uh, but the taser was not successful in stopping him. Mr. Blake walked around his vehicle, opened the driver's side door, and leaned forward. While holding on to Mr. Blake's shirt, Officer Rustin Shesky fired his service weapon seven times. Officer Shesky fired the weapon into Mr. Blake's back. No other officer fired their weapon. The Kenosha Police Department uh, does not have body cameras, and therefore the officers uh, we're not wearing body cameras. During the investigation following the initial incident, uh, Mr. Blake admitted that he had a knife in his possession, uh, and DCI agents, that's the Division of Criminal Investigation, uh, recovered a knife from the driver's side floorboard of Mr. Blake's vehicle. Uh, a search of the vehicle located no additional weapons. All right, we're getting some information there, Chanley, but it also raises a lot of questions, especially when it comes to this knife. Um, what else are authorities saying, and is there anything more about when he had the knife, where he possessed it, when did police officers see it, or did they see it? Um, any of that information coming out, you know, the most important information? There's still a lot unknown, Vinny. Even today, there were a couple of press conferences today by officials in Kenosha, but no new details. And so it is still unclear. All we know based on the report, the statement that DCI and the Wisconsin Department of Justice released was that he did, Jacob Blake, admitted to having a knife. This was after the incident happened. And that they recovered a knife in the driver's side floorboard of his vehicle. But there were no other weapons around. So, it's yes, it's still very unclear about when he had a knife or whether he had a knife or if the officers knew he had a knife or when or how or any of those questions. We're just not sure. So it's uh, it's still a mystery to be had. But we did learn some other key information during the press conference that you just played. The identity of the officer who shot Jacob Blake seven times in the back. Officer Rustin Shesky, he's a seven-year veteran of the Kenosha Police Department. And while they didn't identify the other officers, the Attorney General of Wisconsin said they will identify the other officers soon. But he and the other officers have been placed on administrative leave 
And they're also saying that this investigation is moving pretty quickly. The uh, DOJ of Wisconsin is investigating. They'll hand over the report to the local DA there in Kenosha County, who will then make a determination whether or not a crime was committed or to bring charges against the officers. Julie, the it comes back to me, the knife. And, and we know in the law, possession can mean many different things. You can possess it on your person. You can possess it because you control it because it's in your car. I mean, I, I think the public, be, and the reason we're just in a different world now. I mean, you, do they see what's happening around them in Kenosha and in other cities because information is not being released? I understand the old-fashioned way. We've got an ongoing investigation. We can't say anything. Meanwhile, Kenosha is burning down literally, literally. Cities are burning down literally in our country because information is not being released. I mean, how hard is it to say, okay... The, the, the knife was on the floorboard, or the officers saw a knife. The officers never saw a knife. I mean, this stuff they know already, don't they? Absolutely, Vinny. Absolutely, they know this. I'm with you 100%. I don't know why they're not saying. I get that it used to be that there was an investigation and everyone patiently waits. But guess what? Nobody's patient anymore. We're in, in an age where everyone expects things instantaneously. They have to get out in front of this and share what they know because everybody else is telling the narrative. Lots of narrative. Uh, narratives, excuse me. We don't know what's right, what's wrong. Everyone's forming a opinions. It is a mess. It is a mess. There's violence. There's probably going to be more violence. Um, this is very, very bad. And, you know, back to that knife. Yes, this is this is what's key here, because when a subject is armed and, and is armed with a deadly weapon and the officers using deadly force, that shooting very well might have been justified. And if they would be more transparent and say whether, for in instance, he said, I'm going to get a knife, or if they knew the knife was in the car, if he said, I've got a knife in my car, and they see him walking, they see him reaching, maybe the officer sees it in his hand. This could put to bed a lot of questions here, and then we could know who potentially may be facing charges, and it wouldn't be the officer. So really, they should be speaking up about this. I, I, I can't say it enough. It should be expedited. And the knife is key, Vinny. It, it's key. Uh, these officers, they put their lives on the line day in and day out. I'm not just saying this tonight. I've said it for years. I think police have the toughest job in the world. They're protecting the public every day. They don't go to work hoping to shoot someone. That's just not how it works. They want to go to work and come home alive is what happens. Officer safety is key. And when someone is potentially a threat with a deadly weapon, it's going to be met with deadly force. Michael, I don't see, I see transparency as the only way around it. There's going to be another police shooting. We know it. It's going to happen because they happen. We, and the statistics are there. We know that they happen. It's, it's part of, of what happens year in and year out. Police departments, attorney generals, governors, sheriffs, whoever it is, just transparency helps the situation. Vinny, I don't know why they don't get it. I, I wish I could answer that question. I mean, people are watching this video over and over. It's probably been viewed millions and millions of times. And we are in a different age, as you said, many, many times. And when that is available to so many people across the country, and the country is falling apart and is divided, and this issue is dividing our country, it's imperative that they get out in front of this thing and let people know what they know. If it's good information, let them know what they know. The only conclusion people are going to come to is that they're trying to shape and change the information or wait for some information that is beneficial to them, and then they'll let it out in drips and drabs to try to help uh, change public opinion. That's how people are going to interpret it. Get out in front of it. You know, from the beginning, we've said, well, if there were body cams, it would have made it. No, as you saw, there's 50 witnesses there. Plenty of people are going to tell the story of what happened that day. And we're going to find out. And they just need to get it out as soon as they possibly can. And again, I just want to reiterate, deadly threat is one thing. Shooting someone in the back is another. At no point in that video did I see yet this, this man posing a deadly threat to anyone. All right, when we come back, we've got a lot more to talk about tonight. The docket is full, as they say. Chad Daybell, is there a plea offer? Will there be a plea offer? And what happens if there is? We'll answer all those questions when we come back.